Did we do class boundaries and class width and anything like that? OK. All right, so I'm going to put and I'm going to do this all on a spreadsheet so everybody can see what I'm doing and I don't write all over the board. So this does not mean OK, let I me mean, say this because somebody I don't know how to use spreadsheet. I'm not asking you to use a spreadsheet. I'm doing this because everybody can see it. I've got to make it big where everybody can see it. Just give me a second. Because I'm going to do several things here. And I need to color the background, color it uh, a dark gray. And fix the lines. Don't worry, virtual people. Let me finish what I'm doing and then you'll see it. OK, y'all should be able to see it here. Virtual, can y'all see it? OK. All right. This is a spreadsheet and just think of this as me drawing on the board. But if I draw on the board, I'm not going to be able to get all this stuff because I write so big. So I use a spreadsheet usually to do this. So here we're going to make a frequency distribution. This is your lower class limits. And I'm going to fix that where you can see it better. And your upper class limits. And your frequency. Frequency is usually depicted with a lowercase f. So let's use an example I used probably the other day, or if I did, I, I can't remember. Uh, 20 to 24. And from 25 to 29. And 30 to 34. And 35 to 39. Let's just say those are ages or something. And then 2, 4, 6, and 8. Let me fix those a little bit better. Because I'm one of these people I can't stand stuff to be on the right side. I like for it to be centered. And let's make it a little bit bigger. And let's make it aerial because I'm an aerial person. And let's make that top row bold and underlined. All right, everybody with me so far? So this is a frequency distribution. The only difference is I don't have a black line going down this way and I don't have a black line going right here. Everybody got it? All right, so we need to find the first thing we need to find is called the class width. And this is when you have a quantitative. You need to find the class width. Class width is the most important number. How do you find the class width? You subtract, write this down, you subtract two coinciding or two consecutive lower class limits or two consecutive upper class limits. Subtract two consecutive upper class limits or two consecutive lower class limits. Doesn't matter. And the class width is always positive because it's, it's basically a distance, so it's always positive. OK, I'm not making fun, but y'all gonna have to tell me. The use of a truck like that. I mean, I really don't know the use of a truck like that. Not. I didn't think so. OK, and that's coming from somebody that has a Dodge. I just don't understand those trucks. Anyway, so what is 25 minus 20? What is 29 minus 24? What is 34 minus 29? What is 30 minus 25? What is 35 minus 30? What is 39 minus 34? So what's the class width? There you go. So the class width is equal to. I'm going to take 25. And minus. 20. And that is five. 
That's the class width is the most important, and you're going to see why in just a second. OK, over here, I'm going to do the class boundaries. No, not class boundaries, the midpoint. Midpoint is usually called X. And in your formulas, you should be seeing some of these letters. Because that's what we're going to be doing. We're going to take those formulas. We're going to start plugging and chugging. Now, how do you find the midpoint in algebra? Remember the midpoint when you were doing graphing and stuff? Take the lower number, add it to the higher number, and do what? That's the same thing. So you take your lower class limit plus your upper class limit, and divide by two. So I'm going to use 20 and 24 since it's the first one. So your lower class limit plus your upper class limit divided by what? Two. And now you just add your class width to, to all of those. So I'm going to add plus 22 plus five. 27. And what's 27 plus five? Good job. And that's how you, that's the easy way to do these things. You add the class width. And of course, 32 plus five is 37. I'm not going to do that one. Okay, so there's your midpoints. Now, for your class boundaries, your class boundaries has a rule with it. And this rule is the following. If you have whole numbers, your class boundary is going to be to the 10th. If you have hundredths, your class boundary is going to be to the, I'm sorry. If you have a quant uh, uh, distribution and it's given to you in tenths, you're going to go to the hundredths with your class boundary. If you have one given to you with the hundredths, you're going to go with the what? Thousands. That's the way it goes. We're given whole numbers here. So my class boundary, I'm going to put right here. The class boundaries are not used for um, calculations. They really don't have any really don't have any mathematical properties. They're just something that somebody can test somebody on. If that makes sense. So what's the class boundary? Well, what what number comes before 20? So that's going to be 19.5 and then add your class width. What's 19.5 plus 20 plus 5? 24.5. What's 24.5 plus 5? 29.5. What's 29.5 plus 5? 34.5. And what's 34.5 plus 5? And how do I know to stop? That's the 39, exactly. So there's your class boundaries. Now I'm going to highlight this guy right here. I'm looking at an angle on the whiteboard, so y'all just bear with me. And this guy right here. Why am I highlighting those? Well, let's go back to our handy dandy. Why am I highlighting F and X? because they're used in formula. Now, I'm going to tell y'all something and y'all not going to want to hear this. You have to read the formula. OK. Some students like for the teacher to do everything. You got to read the formula. This says, what is that big funky Iggy E look? What is that? What is somebody tell me what that means? Huh? The sum. Write that down. That is uppercase Sigma. Capital Sigma, S-I-G-M-A. 
Capital Sigma in any math or science means to summate, to summation, to add up all the numbers. That's what Sigma means. And that's F times X. Put your little dot between that F and X. I don't know why they don't put a dot there. It confuses students. And a dot there, F times X squared and F times X. Make sure you put a dot between the F and the X, OK? Because that means multiplication. You know, y'all just took two years of algebra one and algebra two and there's F of X and then they do a formula and they do F of X and don't put, you know, you got to designate if that's F of X or if it's, you know, F times X and these are F times X's. All right. Summation of F. Can somebody give me another letter for yeah. summation of F? I mean, give me another letter that sometimes people use when you add up all the numbers. It's right here. N. Summation of F can be written as N. So you need to, if you want to change this to an N, you can if you want to. And I'm fixing to do all of this, but you got you got to read the formulas. Because what happens is, this is what happens. I give you the formulas, you write them down, or I send them to you, and then you sit there and stare at a problem and you don't know how to do it, and you just send it to me and say, I don't know how to do this. You're not reading the formulas, okay? And I'm gonna show you what I'm talking about. So I'm gonna go to the spreadsheet here. The first formula says the mean is equal to the summation of F times X. So I'm going to make a column right here and I'm going to call it F times X. Now a lot of people say, well, here, but I don't know how to use this is this is you making a column in your notebook. You're doing this by hand if you're not doing it with the Excel spreadsheet. OK. Now, of course, you can use your calculator to multiply 2 times 22. I mean, that's a very hard calculation. 44. I mean, you can 4 times 27. I don't know. You might can do that. That's what? 108? Because 4 times 25 is 100. I mean, you can figure that out. 6 times 32, 186. Or 198. Or something like that. And eight times 37, 263 or 266 or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> when you're doing them in your head, you can't do them as fast as calculators. All right, so F times X. And here we go. Equals two times 22. copy those down and you do the math in your in your notes so you can there you go I thought I said 296 I don't know if I said 296 or not and I'm gonna highlight those yellow well I'm gonna highlight those green also because you're gonna need that in the formula and I'm gonna go ahead and add it up right here I'm gonna add this up too well that's in in is equal to I'm going to add those up. So I'm going to highlight that also. Green. And might as well take that control C and copy it right here. Control V. I'm gonna put a I'm gonna put a border around that. I don't know if you're gonna be able to see it or not. And a border around that. Okay, so there's two numbers that we can use in our formulas. Let's go look at our formulas again. Well, why do people get why do people get well they try to do everything at one time, guys? Okay. Y'all try to do everything between the two blue lines in your notebook paper. That's where y'all try to do everything. 
That don't, don't work that way. You do it step by step, like I'm showing you. All right, do we have f of x, f times x? Yes. Do we have the summation of f? Yes. We can actually find our mean now. What else do we need? We got n, we got x, we got f. What else do we need? There's one more thing we need that I didn't mention, and it's in the formula that I didn't mention. We got x, we got f, we got n. We don't have x what? We don't have x squared. So let's make a column called x squared. And you'll see, I'm going to put all this together after I get everything I need. So I'm going to put, and I'm going to put x squared right here. Now I'm not going to color it. Well, I guess I will color it. I'll color it a different color, maybe yellow. So x, well, x squared. And that's going to be equal to x raised to the second power. And you would take your calculator and you will do all of these like so. There you go. I'm not going to color x squared because actually we don't use, we use f times x squared, which I'm going to do right here. So I'm going to color this one. This is going to be f times x squared. And you're going to see here in just a second, we got everything we need to do our formulas. So f, so that's going to be equal to f times x squared. Hold on a second. Now there is another green highlight because we're going to use that column too. All right, now I've just done everything I need to do to plug into my formula. And I want you to go ahead and write all that down. Now you don't need, I didn't color the class boundary and the class width because you don't need that for your calculations. You need these four columns. Well, you really, you need this to actually do your math. Okay, so these are pretty much a lot of the numbers that we're going to use right here. All right, so let's look at the formula. And let's let's say mean right here, mean. Mean is equal to the summation of what? F times X. Somebody show me where the summation of F times X is. What number? 640. 640, so it goes right here. So equals that number right there. And it's going to be divided by what number? What? Summation of F. Where is the summation of F? It could be called what? N. And then you just do that math and you get 640 divided by what? 20? It's 32, isn't it? And there is your mean. So I'm going to just highlight that in yellow. That is your mean right here, 32. Now we're going to do the variance. Now the variance says we've got to take in and we got to multiply it by what? Let's go to the formula. There's n. And we got to multiply it by what? 
the summation of f times x squared. Where is the summation of f times x squared? 20,980. Y'all see how this falls into place after you do all the steps? You just plug and chug. Minus, and I'm typing in the word minus because if you type in a minus symbol, uh, it, it's, it's gonna, we're going to want a number. So I'm just going to put minus. Let's go back to the formula. Minus what? F times X summation what? Squared. So I've got to take that 640 and I've got to what? Square it because that's summation of F times X right here. 640. I got to take that 640 and I've got to square it. Now, a lot of you say these two are the same thing. That's like saying a cat and a tiger is the same thing. They're not. OK, this is F times X squared. This is F times X quantity squared. Two different animals. So I'm going to go down here. And I'm going to type in equals this number. And I'm going to put a square out here so you'll remember to square it. Can't type today. Now, somebody tell me what's on the bottom. Come on now. Y'all should be able to do this. What's in? Well, I think it was 20, wasn't it? And what's in minus one? Okay, please don't sit there and ask me, what's in minus one? Well, 20 minus one is 19. So on the bottom, you're going to multiply by 20 times what? 20 times 19. Okay, I want y'all to go ahead and take your calculator and I want you to do the first part, 20 times 20,000 and then 640 squared and then 20 times 19. And I want you to do it step by step until you get an answer. And that's your variance. Because I'm going to move this down a little bit and I'm going to do it with you, but I'm going to wait until you do it first. So variance is equal to. And if you can't do it, just write it down as being a failure. Why do you have Iron Army on your laptop? Yeah, what? Yeah, you go to Iron Covenant? Mm -hmm. Okay. I made my own gym. Yeah. I'm slowly getting back into it. COVID knocked me out. I had a, I had, I had, I'll be honest, well, I'm not going to say COVID because I don't think I had COVID. I had the flu and they said I had COVID, but I had that, I had the flu for two weeks. That knocked me out. And then I rolled my ankle, getting off the tractor, hit a rock. I, I jumped on a rock and I didn't see the rock and it turned my ankle. And then I just had, a, I've had a bad year. 2000, 2020 was a bad year, not just for COVID. It was a bad year for me too. So, yes, sir. McClough's, you didn't say it right. It's McClough's. Yeah, McClure Road. Yeah, I live down there. Yeah, live on the farm down uh, on the left. Yeah, I got there. My 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 uncle's on the right. How'd you know that? I live on McClure Road. Where do you live? Uh, I live you, you you the fourth house on the right, aren't you? Yeah. 
That's the old Elrod house. That was my mama's, not my mama's people. I'm between the crows and the Yeah, that's the old Elrod house. Wow. I'll throw a beer bottle in, in the yard next time I go by there. Mom said you need to get out there and get a gym. I know. You know why I made my own gym? Because my mom was What? No. I made my own gym because of the drama at the gym. That's why I like Josh Meyer and everybody's just nice. Yeah, I've heard I've heard good things and uh Kevin McGuire goes there too. Yeah, he does. Yeah. All right, so here we go. Twenty. Now I'm gonna do this step by step for you. So y'all won't have an excuse. Times that and that's gonna be a BA number. Somebody tell me why that number has to be bigger than the six forty squared. Because you can't take the square root of what? You can't take the square root of what? A negative. So when you do the 20 times 20,000 and the 640 squared, if the 640 squared or whatever those numbers are comes out bigger, than the, then you've done something wrong because you can't have a negative. Minus, and I'm putting that minus there so you can line it up with the numbers that I'm doing. It equals 640 raised to the second power. And yes, this number is bigger. This number should always be bigger. We'll use green than this number and we'll use a slight red. That's uh, too dark right there. This number should always be smaller than this number, not by much. And then 20 times 19. <coughs> Excuse me. And now it's just basic mathematics. Variance is equal to this number minus this number divided by this number and the variance is equal to that's not a negative is it what is that a dot or something i don't know what that is it shouldn't be negative equals this number there and one thousand is that ten thousand ten thousand divided by 380 is your variance. So I'm going to color that another color because that's one thing that you'll be asked for on a test. We'll color it that Tennessee orange looking. There you go. And how do you find the standard deviation? root of the variance or you raise the variance to the 0.5 power. However you want to do it. And I'll color that a different color. We'll color that blue. A soul. Como se dice azul espanol? Azul. And there it is. I'm going to move it up a little bit. Now, if you notice, this math is not hard. Is it? It's not hard. But what, you, what people try to do is they try to take this right here and they try to do it all in one step, guys. All right? Don't do it like that. You go up here and you do these columns right here. Get your in right here. And then you just plug in one. Plug and chug. And a lot of people say, well, Hubert, I, I, I break, I, when I get home, I can't do it. Well, then you pull up the formulas and you what? You read the formulas. The formulas will tell you what to do. 
You just got to re re read them. And some of y'all don't like to do that. Yes, ma'am. Sure. Virtual people, if you got any questions, holler them out now. You gonna go down or let's stay? I should do the little variance. Okay, variance. There's variance. Twenty six point three one five seven eight nine. And yes, I carry my stuff out to five or six digits because in statistics you round at the very end of the problem right before you type in the answer. That's when you round. You don't round in the middle of a problem. Virtual people, how are we feeling? I mean, as far as and I tell you what, if you want me to, I'll save this and send it to you. You want me to save it? And that way you can play with it. Of course, some of y'all are going to screw it up, but. Save as we'll save it as. Um, well, let's save it. Save it as mean standard deviation of a quantitative. No, no sneezing in class. Frequency distribution. And save. And then I'll send it to y'all. When I send it through the chat, it automatically goes to the file page. Y'all know that, right? I don't know if y'all know that, but it does. So I'm going to hit the handy dandy chat button. And I'm going to send it, upload. And once the people virtually get it, that means it's on your file page. OK, somebody give me a thumbs up or a nod that you got it. OK, got two thumbs up, so that means it's on your file page. Now, please don't mess it up. All right, so you all do another one. All right, and we might not have enough time because some of y'all start convulsing, but I'll get you started. Let's. Uh, Let's go to. Let me just go down here and start another one. All right. So. You don't have to do the class boundaries and everything. Let's do the let's do the uh, standard deviation. Lower class limit. Upper class limit. And frequency. Let's go with 18. No. Let's go 15 to 18. 15 to 18. 19, and that's a class width of four, so that'd be 23. And no, that's not right. Be 20 to 24. Sorry. Let's see, 20, that's five and 19 be 24. There we go. You have to get you have to get it right when you do it. OK, so that'd be 25 and 29. And. 30 and 34. And let's go with. 5, 10, 15, 20. All right, now I'm going to give you a chance to do it, so I'm going to give you about two or three minutes and then we'll start doing everything. I'll go ahead and give you in. There's in. Wow, I could have done that in a million years. Got exactly on 50. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, that's given to you. Yeah, that's uh, the, the the frequency distribution will be given to you. Now I could ask you to create one, but I'm not going to do that. Now, hopefully, you copy down the formula and you're using the formula right now to say, okay, what columns do I need? You got in. You got F, so 
So you need X and X squared. I just bought me a uh, total gym. I bought one of those. Problem is, I'm gonna have to get another. I'm gonna have to get rid of something because my gym is getting smaller and smaller. Oh, the equipment. I'm buying more and more equipment. And you just did that in your garage, right? Yeah. You started like five years ago. Yeah. The first time yeah. Well, I can't park my truck in the garage. The truck is too long, so might as well just. I will be on the bulldozer tomorrow. They don't start till 7.30. You going to be there? You going to be on the bulldozer in the dark? No, but I, I, I'll i probably be watching a movie. I know, but I don't get into football that much. I really don't. And plus, I don't, I don't, I don't do people either. So I'm just kidding. I pretty much stay on the farm. I pretty much stay on the farm. And you know what I found out since I stayed on the farm? Life is a whole lot less complicated. Yeah. I guess I'm turning into Squidward. Uh, hate people. People hate me. Good gracious, we got 12 people. One, two, 12 people virtually men today. Miss Gettings, I know that's not a ceiling fan. I know. Okay, thank you. I'd rather have a forehead any day than a ceiling fan. I can't stand to see ceiling fans. Yesterday, I, I mean, yesterday I had a whole class, at least ten ceiling, uh, ten foreheads. I'm like, what's up with these people? So I am gonna need, I'm gonna need x. I'm gonna need x. So I need to get x first. So that's equal to this guy plus this guy divided by two. And I got to put a parenthesis around it first guy. And copy that down. And I need to X squared. Was this guy raised to the second power? And copy that down. And I need a F times X. And a F times, oops, sorry, times X squared. Priority one message coming in on secured channel. So equals F times X and F times X squared. And copy those down and do a summation. Y'all check my numbers as I'm going so I don't mess up anything. How do those look? We'll highlight this one green. Highlight this one green. 
I like this one green. Somebody check those three. No, well, I know 50's right. Y'all would have said something by now. So check F times X summation and F times X squared and let me know if those look right to you. Good. Now all you got to do is plug and what? Chug. Plug and chug. Or quit. You can quit. Quit's good. Get you a box. Put it in a ditch. Live in a box and ditch. Oh, boy. Get your personality from your granddad. <laughs> huh? Yeah, he's goofy. You have to get your granddad to tell a story about my truck. Yeah, you have to ask him about my truck. Okay. My first truck, my first vehicle. Got stopped by two cops. You have to give. He tells the story a whole lot better than I do. <laughs> if it hadn't been, if it hadn't been for your grandfather that night, I would have been in the Iba jail, and then taken. With the highway patrol. I mean, that was it, it was unbelievable. I was in a truck that had no lights on it. I, my first truck, I just had got it that day and I wanted to show off. It was a piece of junk. I bought it for three hundred dollars. It was a sixty-six Chevy pickup truck. That thing is worth there's no telling what that truck's worth now. But it was it was about to fall apart. Okay, so what is the mean? Mean is the F of F times X summation divided by what? Divided by 50. So you should have, for the mean, you should have 27. So we'll color that. That aqua color. So all our answers are going to be in aqua. Now what? Well, the variance. I've got to hurry because some of y'all are going to start convulsing. Um, N times what? That big, that big number times F times that, that 37,700 minus M I N U S that 1350 raised to the what? Raised to the second power. And those two numbers should be very close, but this one should be smaller. And what is 50? times 49 and that's your variance and I'm going to stop right there because y'all can finish it. You should be able to finish that and take the square root of it. OK, so I'm going to shut off the recording right here. And I got to call the roll. So the virtual people make sure you turn your microphones on because I'm just going to go down the list because some of y'all are going to self combust if I don't hurry up.